Hey guys, it's me, Seren, back with another video. This is going to be a video on a topic that I've been thinking about um, for a long time now that I've wanted to do a video on. As you guys can see from the title, the question that I'm kind of asking in this video is, is African American an ethnicity? I've been thinking about this probably for like months now because we've been having a lot of conversations on social media and on Twitter about a lot of differences um, throughout the diaspora in terms of you know, just differences in culture amongst black people as a collective, like African Americans or black Americans, whichever you prefer, are not the same as, you know, continental Africans who are also not the same as West Indians, you know, who, and then once you even start getting into like nationality and, and those types of like cultural differences, it's, it's very different. And kind of like the way that Latinx or you know Hispanic is considered an ethnicity that kind of stretches um, you know it's, it's kind of like linked by a shared culture and a shared language. I've been thinking a lot about black Americans and black American culture as its own separate distinct thing like we have a thing we have a thing here in the United States that is not I mean, they try to replicate it everywhere, all over the world, even other black people, again, throughout the diaspora. I was reading this series of tweets from like four years ago. Um, somebody had was retweeting them from um, Corinthia, Mickey Kendall, literally from like 2013, where she was talking about black American cool as an American export. And a lot of people have talked about, you know, African American culture being the largest export out of America, rap hip-hop, our slang, the way we dress, the way we do our hair, you know, all these things becoming this, like, larger-than-life, this cultural capital, um, and turning into these, like, phenomenons that people then utilize to make money. They put on fleek, on t-shirts, and, and, you know, the dab, like, the number one rap song in Nigeria a few years ago was, like, Nigerian dab, and, you know, people that are, like, making all this money off of our culture and off of our cultural capital as something that is exported out of America. And it just really got me to thinking about is African American, should that be considered an ethnicity? And in Corinthia's tweets, she was talking about how black American cool is expo is exported and is um, part, part what would it be? Partaken, partaken, partaken in? I don't know what would be the proper grammatical way to say that, but it, she was talking about how even other black people throughout the diaspora partake in black American culture, even people, black people throughout the diaspora that then will turn around and say that black Americans have no culture. It's like, but you, you want to dab and you want to say on oh, fleek, fleek this, fleeky, fleeky that, lit, 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 this is lit, that's lit, you know, you, you, you see, you see, you know, all different types of Black people, again, from the West Indies, from the Caribbean, from, you know, different countries in continental Africa, you know, from Ghana, from Nigeria, kind of like picking and choosing and taking a lot of black black American culture for themselves. But then they'll turn around and they'll say, well, black American, oh, they don't live anywhere. They don't belong anywhere. They don't have a home. They don't have a culture. We have a culture, you know, poor them. They don't have any history. They don't have any past. And, and it's almost like, should we be considered an ethnicity because because of the fact that we were cut off from our from our roots from our history from our past and brought here and really forced to forge something new to create something new that you know like that is that is completely unique now of course of course it was influenced you know by kind of like what I talked about in my roots video you know you start with you start with enslaved African peoples that have a certain way of, of doing their hair, they have a certain way of eating, they have a certain way of dressing, but then as it goes down through the generations, that kind of gets melded with this whole, you know, a lot of these like Western ideas and Western concepts, and even America, you know, as a country is still such a young, new nation, and the whole concept of America was to, was to build something new. And black Americans came here and we built something new and we created our own culture that is now exported all over the world. And it's just really, really, really interesting to think about, you know, should we be categorized as having our own ethnicity? That our, you know, our race is black, our nationality is American, 
and our ethnicity is black American or African American, where we are linked by a shared culture and even a shared language of African American vernacular English. Like we have our own slang words. Again, we have our own style of dress. We have our own types of music, jazz music, which we created, rock and roll, which we created, rap and hip hop, which we created, country and blues and bluegrass, you know, soul, R&B. That's culture, right? And ethnicity is defined as a group of people that are linked by a shared culture and also especially nine times out of ten a shared language. And it's like somebody that is a continental African, like a Nigerian or a Ghanaian or, you know, or a West Indian, a Jamaican, a Trinidadian, they're not going to have that same shared culture as me. We have a shared race, right, as black people, but we're not going to have a shared culture. And this just reminds me of what I was talking about in my Colin Kaepernick video and what we've talked about before online and, and in real life conversations, talking about biracial people and mixed race people that are visibly black, that are visibly black, that grew up in America, that grew up in African American culture. You have some people that are full black, you know, let's say a full black, I, I keep thinking of continental Africans that keep coming to mind, you know, a full black continental African from Ghana they're not going to have the same shared culture as me, but this mixed race biracial or biracial, you know, black American, they will understand more what my black experience is like in America, in the United States, than a continental African or a Caribbean or, you know, someone that is not from here that came here or was raised in a completely different culture than the culture that I was raised in. And then just kind of getting into differences in the diaspora instead of you know all of us kind of being being lumped together it's the same because we are not the same and we do not have the same culture we don't listen to the same music we don't eat the same type of food we don't speak the same language and i have more in common with with a mixed race black american than with a fully black non-american like and i find that over and over again in a lot of the dialogues that i have with with non-American black people, a lot of the times they do not understand where I'm coming from about a wide variety of topics and it kind of has to be broken down and explained that as someone that grew up in the West, in America, that was born and raised here to non-immigrant parents, I had a different experience than you. And I always reference Malcolm Gladwell's Black Like Them as a great, great, great resource, an essay that he wrote, you know, 20 years ago, talking about kind of the hierarchies within Blackness and, and the way that it has been proven, it's been studied by sociologists, and it's been proven that Black Americans, African Americans are seen at the bottom of the totem pole when it comes to hierarchies within blackness. So especially um, continental Africans are seen as being like the top. They, they're gonna work hard, they're gonna work harder, they're gonna come to this country, they're gonna have more respect, they're gonna have more culture, they're gonna have more morals, they're gonna have more values. And then like a little bit lower is like West Indians and Caribbeans. And then like, you know, at the very bottom is like African Americans who are lazy and don't wanna work and just wanna accept handouts and don't know how to pull ourselves up by our bootstraps and we're thugs and all these stereotypes that you hear about, you know, African Americans. And it's interesting because one of the studies that was referenced in Black Like Them by Malcolm Gladwell was talking about how studies have shown that for in, uh, continental Africans that come, come to America, that once their children are born here and once they, even if they give them like, um, you know, like a quote unquote, like African name or something like that, once that they start getting more immersed in African American culture and speaking African American vernacular English and dressing the way that we dress, and then let's say that they have children, and their children are even more immersed in the culture and are seen as African American, the closer you are seen to being, the closer you are to being seen as an African American and not an immigrant, an African immigrant or a West Indian immigrant or second generation or the children of immigrants, the lower you are seen on the totem pole, the less likely you are to get hired, to get callbacks. All, like all of that stuff has been like proven. Cause I know there's gonna be people in the comments that are like, ah, oh, that's not true and blah, 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 blah. And I also wanna say from what I'm, a lot of what I'm talking about, I'm talking about systemic. I feel like I always have to say this when I'm talking 
to white people or talking about white people. There's a difference between systemic oppression and individual experiences. Because I know there's going to be people that are like, oh, well, I'm African and black Americans call me an African booty scratcher. And so I don't know what the hell you're talking about because y'all always do that. And it's like, just because somebody called you an African booty scratcher and it hurts your feelings does not mean that in terms of systemic oppression, black Americans are not seen as lower on the totem pole than you. That's just a fact. It is what it is. Now, yes, of course, there is a lot of tension, which is a direct result of colonization between African Americans and Africans. And yes, that tension does go both ways. You have African Americans that call Africans poor, dirty African booty scratchers. And then you have a lot of Africans and other non-American black people throughout the diaspora that look down on African Americans and see us as lazy and see us as not wanting to work and see us as not having a home and see themselves as better than us. But I'm not talking about individual experiences that we have all had because of course we've all had different individual experiences and we all need to work on the way that we address each other and think about each other throughout the collective, you know, of the diaspora. But I'm not talking about individual experiences. I'm talking about systemic oppression. In terms of systemic oppression that can be weighted and measured, Black Americans are at the bottom. That just is what it is. It's a fact. Please don't sit in my comment section and try to argue about it because you will be blocked. I'm telling you from right now. I don't want to hear about how somebody calling you an African booty scratcher outweighs the systemic oppression against African Americans. Like, I just don't care. Sorry. Not sorry. I am not actually sorry. I am sorry. I am sorry. I am sorry. Nigga, no, I'm not. Like, you know, like, y'all want to partake in our Black American culture, but at the same time look down on us. And it's like, are we our own culture? Are we our own ethnicity? I think it's really something interesting to talk about and to think about. And I was also talking to someone on Twitter that was that was talking about differences within Black people throughout the collective and saying that also, you know, as a direct result of colonialism, a lot of the animosity that we have for each other is it possible to form global collectives of blackness throughout the diaspora? And I said, you know, I definitely think that global systems are really important for solidarity, you know, in face of continued colonialism and systemic oppression, you know, against black people as a race. Um, but I also think that it's important for us to understand that we are not a monolith, that blackness is not a monolith, and that we do not all have necessarily a shared culture, right? I think that's really something interesting that we need to maybe start uh, coming to terms with, you know? And I've also thought a lot about should African Americans or Black Americans, I know some people prefer Black American to African American because African American is so broad because we don't know where we came from in Africa. It's not like the same as saying, no one really says like European American, right? They say Pol Polish American, Czech American, Italian American. But since we don't know, we have to say African American. So I know some people prefer to just say Black American. And, and I've also been thinking about should Black Americans, utilizing that term instead of African American, be considered indigenous to North America? I'm, I'm sorry, not North America, the continent. Should we be considered indigenous to the United States of America as a country? Like, because American chattel slavery, right, it predates the Revolutionary War, which means it predates the formation of the United States as a country. So does that mean that we are indigenous to the United States of America? Right? That's also something kind of interesting to think about. Like, is, like, are we indigenous? Not indigenous to North America, the continent, not indigenous in the sense of how, you know, Native peoples like Native Americans and indigenous Mexicans, you know, are, we're already on the landmass that we now know of as North America, North America, but indigenous in the sense of we predate the formation of the United States of America. So, I like, technically... So that's also kind of because we were also brought here against our will. We did not choose to come here. It was a forced migration. We are not immigrants. You know, I hate this, you know, we are all immigrants fucking narrative, which I've talked about in videos before, because we are not all immigrants. We are not the children of immigrants. We are not, we, you know, we do not, we do not all this fucking narrative of like, oh, and everyone came to this country for a better life. No, no, no. Black, black Americans, African Americans that are the descendants of slaves, our people did not come here for a better life. That was a forced migration. We were forcibly picked up and moved here. So it is something to be said for, again, like us having our own culture, us having our own ethnicity as indigenous peoples to the United States of America. We created our own thing and it's ours. 
and it is our thing and it belongs to us. And it is a huge export out of America that even other black people throughout the diaspora want to take a part of without giving us our fucking credit and our just due. And then want to turn around and tell us that we don't have any culture. Like, well, you are not a part of my shared culture. You are not a part of my shared ethnicity in a way, right? Something really, really, really interesting to think about. Um, but like I already said, not to say that there should not be global collectives of black people. Because again, I think that's really important. Um for solidarity and and um, and in order to kind of eject ourselves from from racism, the system of racism, white supremacy, and a lot of this programming, this white supremacist programming, and a lot of the ideas again that we even have about each other. You know, if you are if you are a continental African that thinks that Black Americans are lazy and thugs and violent. That is a direct result of white supremacist programming. If you are a Black American that thinks that in you know, con I can't want to say indigenous. Continental Africans are you know African booty scratchers living in mud huts, dirty with AIDS. That is a direct result of white supremacist programming. So even a lot of these ideas that we have about each other and these divides that we you know find find amongst our individual cultures throughout the diaspora is a direct result of white supremacist programming of the system of racism, white supremacy. So hopefully, we can form uh, you know more global solidarity outside of that like i've been saying you know since the beginning of 2017 operating outside of established infrastructure and in ways to figure out you know how how we can kind of build and, and create these ideas for ourselves and define ourselves and define these spaces for ourselves and i do think that you know black americans are, are, are i mean i think there's a pretty solid case to be made for us being our own ethnicity um and maybe even be being considered indigenous to the United States of America as a country. I think there's there's something interesting there. So let me know what you guys think in the comments. But you're not going to, again, you are not, not going to argue in the comments about how black Americans are not systemically oppressed. You are not going to, y'all are not going to argue, in, really listen, y'all are not going to argue in the comments about who has it, who has it worse. Y'all are not, like, we're just not going to argue about that stuff today. Like, no. And if I see any of that, you get blocked, seriously. So, uh, but do let me know what you think in the comments. Uh, there will be links in the description box. Food for thought as always. See you guys next time.